The driving simulator installed at the Polytechno in Milano is now being used to assess human behavior in several relevant cases. An in-depth understanding of how normal people can be tested in apparently simple everyday driving situation is a topic. The tremendous yo allowed by the Info 100 is a plus that will enable realistic driving. We have engaged an initial panel of 30 people to check the immersive and realistic driving. Referring to the full monitoring of driver, together with eye tracking, gaze, heart rate variability, and skin resistance on the hand, we monitor the mechanical actions of each hand on the steering wheel. This is particularly important during level two cooperative driving. For example, we have seen that the fine tuning of the steering during tangent running is applied by moment of the wrist rather than by forces. Another example is the unwanted steering that occurs when external disturbance is applied to the car. For example, due to a pothole or a kick. We managed to see that the two arms are activated before the stimulus but the brain activates the evasive maneuver. The automatic lane keeping system is to be harmonized with the human driving behavior. Lane keeping is particularly important for level 3 automated vehicles and we can say that our driving simulator is particularly suitable to perform a nearly 100% real driving experience. To be able to use driving simulators extensively, it is necessary that the systems could be used by normal people as well. This is in principle possible with a driving simulator like uh, the DIM 400. For example, looking at uh, the UNECE Regulation 157, certainly in the future the string stability will be an issue. How a number of automotive cars will behave when the density of cars in a lane is particularly high. The reaction to disturbance is also an issue that will have to be discussed since it is a necessary condition for the safe running of healthy vehicles. Politecnico di Milano is a partner of the AI at Edge consortium founded by the European Commission, which works on the topic of artificial intelligence beyond 5G. Our task is to use the driving simulator in order to study how the traffic to a roundabout can be made more fluid, safe and finally less pollutant. A sort of electronic traffic policeman enabled by artificial intelligence and 5G is the goal of the demonstrator that is going to be proposed. OEMs, telco companies and infrastructure management authorities could benefit from the outcomes of our research. We have seen that professional drivers who are used the driving or driving simulators benefit from the absence of high centrifugal forces acting during bends. They can concentrate on fine-tuning vehicle parameters without the disturbance coming from high values of steady quasi-static forces. On the other hand, normal drivers feel uncomfortable due to the absence of these forces. Our task is to investigate how the use of driving simulators can be extended to normal people to enable the widespread use of such machine. We focus on transient maneuvers which are so important for risk assessment. Normally, large simulators appear a bit sluggish. Latency is the key parameter for an immersive experience. We, at Politecnico, put out a call to the world to select a professional driving simulator with the lowest latency and via grade one almost without competitors. For this application, we needed realism, determinants and repeatability. The realism is for sure provided by our cable-driven simulator, which can deliver a top-level immersivity to the driver. 
The iWorksim, our new graphic environment with multi-agent traffic management and sensor fusion, is instead able to provide a realistic, replicable and safe driving experience. The first scenario is a straight highway with some obstacles during the ride. The second one is a urban scenario with a realistic traffic behavior. And the last one is M-City, a virtual model of a real proving ground located in Michigan, used for tests on autonomous vehicles. VI Biotelemetry is a solution developed by VI Grade to perform in the best way the driver monitoring through the acquisition and the real-time analysis of some biological signals coming from the human body. We capture the skin potential response from both hands and the heart activity from a chest vest. The signals are then computed in real-time to provide some features that are strictly related to the emotional conditions of the subject. On the other hand, we also capture the eye movements and the related features such as blink detection, gaze direction and eye lip opening using an eye tracker from SmartEye capable of providing up to 120 signals from eye analysis in real time. For this requirement, we decide to develop an interface to a market-leading software in the field of human monitoring, iMotions. This innovative software can collect data and signals coming from different devices, in our case, our driving simulator, the smart eye system and a camera mounted on the cockpit and align the entire dataset with the same timestamp. It also facilitates the post-processing analysis by providing a user-friendly interface to deliver very specific embedded results in the best way. In the present study, we decided to rely on a homogeneous sample of people with exclusively non-professional driving experiences. So, we decided to include only graduate students in order to recruit participants with comparable age, educational level and driving experience. In our sample, 15 participants were male and 15 participants were female. We limited our sample to native Italian speakers. Of course, participants were screened for being frequent gamers to avoid confounding effect during the simulation experience. Demographic characteristics, personality traits and driving styles will be assessed before starting the experiment because of their consistency across driving simulation experiences. Participants will be asked to report their emotional state at the baseline and after experiencing each scenario. Moreover, the level of immersion during the simulated driving experience will be assessed using a psychometric questionnaire after each driving scenario to evaluate the degree of similarity between the simulated experience and real-life driving. During all the phases of the experiment, a full set of psychophysiological indicators will be recorded. At the end of the experiment, a measurement of simulator sickness will be taken. Psychophysiological indices can provide us with objective measures of behavioral and emotional reactions during a highly immersive simulated driving experience. Parameters such as heart rate and skin conductance can serve as implicit measures of stress and emotional responses primarily associated with the activity of the sympathetic nervous system. Camera-based facial expression analysis can provide information on uh, higher level components of uh, emotions. Eye tracking data can provide measures of cognitive functions such as subject visual attention, alertness and readiness for events occurring in different driving scenarios. More generally, these psychophysiological measures can serve to investigate the interplay between individual differences, including for example driving styles and personality traits, and the human behavioral and emotional reactions manifested during challenging or even adverse simulated driving experience. I answer with two key points. The first point is that we need to work hard for the goals that the European community issued last December and that are close to zero accident in EU by 2050 and nearly 
zero emission road vehicles in EU by 2050. By means of the driving simulator, both of the two goals can be tackled. We are dealing with the Industry 4.0 and automotive design process, connected intelligent transport systems, Industry 4.0 for the traffic, green vehicles and lightweight construction, intelligent transport systems for HMI. The second point refers to the ISO 26262 and in particular to the requirements for the introduction of electric electronic system into cars. We need enormous amount of testing. A key factor is opening the simulator to normal drivers. Now we can be very effective in a number of driving situations, but we aim to extend the number of relevant cases studied at the simulator. Referring to the second key point we have mentioned, we are starting with a profound understanding of immersivity. 30 people out of 90 have been involved in a large study on realism and immersivity in driving simulators. Contrary to what many people may think, simple tasks like driving in a city at low lateral acceleration levels is tricky. We are working on defining proper motion queuing to make several driving tasks more driver friendly and allow for extended experimentation. DIM 400 has superior performance in lane changing, which is a crucial maneuver for development of L3 and L4 vehicles. The DIM 400 is really a driving simulator with a cutting edge technology for studying HMIs in relevant cases. As mentioned, we have defined the motion queuing for lane change to achieve a 100% realism and immersivity for everyday drivers. Trickier is the driving in cities. Very soon, we'll be able to deliver the results of our research on realism and immersivity. The final aim is to study HMI and distraction in everyday driving. <laughs>